My name is Joe Myers and I'm with the Oklahoma State University Library. Today is April 13th, 2012 and I'm in Kellyville, Oklahoma meeting at the home of Roger Kincaid. I'll be interviewing Roger today as part of the Spotlighting Oklahoma Oral History series of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. Thank you for meeting with me here today, Roger. Um, would you tell me a little bit about your family and, and what your childhood was like growing up? It wasn't here in Oklahoma, right? No, it was in Iowa. In Iowa, okay. I was born and raised on a farm in Iowa, and it was, I was born during the Depression, and I, everybody pretty well knows what life was like after the Depression. It was mm -hmm. pretty skimpy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, I didn't much like school. My second year of high school, I decided to join the service. I uh, I wanted to go in during World War II, but I was way too young. So uh, I made up my mind I would go after the war. And uh, I enlisted in the Navy. I had my dad sign for me. I was 17. I went to take my physical and they turned me down for flat feet. So I went home pouting, didn't know what what to do, and I worked on the farm for a year and uh, went to see my brother in Waterloo, which is a bigger town than where I was raised, and I uh, happened to walk by Marine Corps Recruiting Station, and then Blue sold me. Mm -hmm. I enlisted. <laughs> <laughs> so the dress blues got you. Yeah, the dress blues got me. I enlisted in the Marine Corps and went to San Diego basic training. I got out of basic training. I went to Camp Pendleton. was in uh, 4.2 mortars for uh, about six months mm -hmm. and uh, I got orders to take a 20-day leave and report back to Treasure Island in San Francisco. I didn't know where I was going from there and uh, stayed there for about a week or two until I got a ship load and the day we were shipping out of Treasure Island the war broke out in Korea. Wow. And uh, I was detoured. Yeah, I'll say. So um, what, uh, what year was it you went to, to boot camp there? At, uh, you said it, uh, that was at San Diego? Yes, August of 49. August of 49, okay. Um, and did you know ahead of time what you were going to do as far as uh, being in, in Fort Deuce and in, in mortars? No. Okay. No, they, 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 of course, they put you through all kinds of interviews and stuff where you go into boot camp. And they asked me what I wanted to do. What occupation I want, and I told them I wanted motor transport or artillery. Mm -hmm. Well, they naturally give me an 0800 MOS out of boot camp, which is artillery. Mm -hmm. But I went to 4.2 mortars instead. I guess they figured them was artillery at the time. <laughs> but when I got to Korea, I was in the artillery then. I see. I see. So you went from uh, so you went from uh, San Diego to, to Pendleton to train on that. Yeah. Okay. How long did that training last there at Pendleton? Well, uh, I guess it would have been indefinite, but they picked a certain few to send overseas. I see. I figured I was headed for Guam. I, I had, didn't know. I wasn't told, but mm -hmm. I ended up in Korea. Hmm. So you're. Your total training for boot camp and then for for training on mortars. How long? How long? How much time was that, roughly? It was from uh, August of '49 to uh, April of '50. Okay. Now, I know just just from my own research and uh, in the uh, the run up to the Korean War, the U.S. military had been kind of drawn down quite a bit. Oh, definitely, okay. drastically. Yeah. Drastically. How so? I mean, how was it in the in the service at that time while it was being drawn down? It was relaxed. Uh, nobody thought of a war or that we needed combat training or anything. I mean, we we were getting combat training, but not strict enough combat training. Hmm. Okay. And we were undersized, undermanned. We went to Korea and there was so many of us had never seen combat. 
we were, oh, they just was kicking our ass badly mm -hmm. because we were undermanned and undertrained. Okay. But we fought our way out of it yeah. and uh, come out on top, I guess you'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if everything was drawn down, what, uh, did, was there a shortage of equipment or anything like that? Definitely, shortage of equipment. Okay. Was that, that was during, while you were still in the States or just while you are in Korea? Both. Both. What, what kind of things were you missing that you, you could have, that you really needed? Uh, uh, guns. Guns. Yes. Okay. Like the, And clothing. Okay. What kind of, just winter gear, that sort of thing, or? Win, winter gear especially, yeah. Okay, okay. As far as guns, you're talking about uh, like the carbine or the M1, or? No, they, we had M1s and carbines, but the 105s. Oh, you're talking we, about the, the heavy weapons. The, the heavy weapons, we had leftover World War II weapons. Mm. And uh, I guess I shouldn't complain, they got us by. Sure. But... Uh, it would have been better to have newer ones. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so you were 18 when you enlisted uh, in the Marines. Um, do you remember anything about your uh, instructors going through uh, uh, boot camp? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, our senior drill instructor was Corporal Char. He had uh, been in World War II, mm -hmm. and he was, well, I thought real strict, wow. and uh, but he was good. He uh, he brought us through all all of us acting like one, like you know, like we're supposed to. Sure. Um. You remember some of the men that you served with there? Were they the same ones that went with you uh, to Korea? There were uh, three of us went to Camp Pendleton, uh -huh. but then I didn't see anybody I knew after that. Okay. Everyone was classed into their MOS and went in different directions? Yes. I see. I see. Um, so it was... Uh, you went to Treasure Island uh, to prepare to to move overseas. Yes. What 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 month was that? That was uh, August of 1950. No, that was uh, May. May of 1950. Okay. June of 1950. Okay. June of 1950. Okay. What. Um, so you were you were at Treasure Island, June of 1950, and you get orders to head to uh, to Japan. Is that correct? Or I had no idea where I was going. It was just boarding ship, and then the war broke out in Korea. Okay. So they deterred wherever I was headed for. We went to Pearl Harbor. I see. Okay. And in Pearl Harbor, we uh, drew weapons and prepared for combat. Uh, stored our all of our gear except our combat gear, mm -hmm. clothing and everything. They issued us Cosmoline rifles. We cleaned up, mm. got ready to go. Then we flew on a Pan American Stratocruiser to Japan. No kidding. And uh, that was from Hawaii. Flew from Hawaii to, to yeah to Japan. Yeah. And then we took a train the full length of Japan and took a. Japanese boat to Pusan, Korea. Okay. And from Pusan, we took a train up the front lines. Okay, so you came in down way down south there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was uh, with the 1st <clears throat> Marine Brigade around the Pusan perimeter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when uh, we almost lost Korea completely. And uh, that's when Seoul was was uh, attacked, is that correct? Yeah. The, 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 North Koreans had all of Korea, mm -hmm. but a little corner on Pusan, Pusan perimeter. Okay. And uh, during the time we were fighting on the lines, they were getting more replacements in all the time. Mm 
Hmm. Finally, they got enough to make a short division, and that's when we withdrew off the lines, boarded ships, and made the Inchon landing. Okay. Um, let's, let's back up just a bit and, and talk about that, uh, the Pusan perimeter. Um, when you arrived there, um, was there any specific landing or anything like that, or it was just boating over to, uh, uh, to the Korean coast there? We just boated us over to the Pusan Harbor. Yeah. Okay, and then everyone exfilled on, into Pusan and, and uh, took up positions? Yes. Okay. Uh, the Naktong River kind of makes a U-shape mm -hmm. uh, north of Pusan, and that was more or less the border mm -hmm. for the Pusan perimeter. Okay. And Maison was over on the west side of the Pusan perimeter. That's where the heaviest fighting was. That's where we were when we withdrew to make the land. It's on landing. Okay. And for those who don't know, Pusan's pretty much at the southernmost. That's port. the southern port. Yeah. Of, of, of Korea. Uh, Korea. Okay. Um, so you you pulled out of Incheon or pulled out of Pusan. Uh, about what date was that? I Roughly. think it was September tw September twelfth. I believe we made the landing fifteenth. Mm -hmm. I think it was the twelfth we pulled out of. Okay. So that was part of uh, MacArthur's uh, left hook yes. into Incheon. Yeah. Okay. How was that? How was uh, that landing at Incheon and in the days that followed after that? Uh, it was kind of rough, but it could have been rougher. Okay. Uh, How was it rough? Well, first of all, we had that wall to go over right on shore. Mm -hmm. and uh, That was the seawall? Yeah, that seawall. And then uh, up until that time, I had not seen any dead soldiers. Marines, mm -hmm. but uh, just before we got into Sewell, we were moving up on the lines, and I seen three tarp-covered bodies laying alongside the road, and that just made your blood run cold. You mm -hmm. just wanted to go after them, hot and heavy. Yeah. But then, after we took Sewell, worked north a little, the Army Division Commander relieved us and we went back aboard ship and went all the way around Korea to Wonsan. Mm -hmm. That was the right hook, coming yeah. into Wonsan, okay. Well, and we got there and the harbor was full of mines. Mm -hmm. We floated for two weeks out on the sea until they got the harbor cleared and then we made the landing at Wonsan, and Bob Hope had left the day before. <laughs> it was, you know, it, it is kind of comical in a way. <laughs> so but, how was that uh, uh, waiting to get into the harbor there? Uh, did you have any problems with supplies or? Yes, okay. we didn't have no food. All we had was boiled rice three times a day. Good grief. Whew. How? And that, I'm sure you probably had some food when you got there. How how soon after you got there did you have to switch to that boiled rice, or was that from well, the, it was, was that it, from the get go? It was, oh, say three or four days before we run out. Okay. And had to go on rice. So a week and a half, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, on bowl, on boiled rice. How did that affect the the soldiers going on that on boiled rice like that? Well, it didn't affect me, but a lot of we had a lot of dysentery mm. uh, while we were out there. Mm. Um, I don't know how I escaped it, but <laughs> that mostly just from the rice, from the food, or or that I, I, I have no idea what caused it. Okay, I I, I wouldn't imagine boiled rice would have did it, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> how about? Um, so while you're out there, uh, I'm sure you guys weren't sleeping in the rack or anything like that. What did you do on the boat while you're waiting for that uh, for the once on harbor? Well, well, mainly we were uh, watching over the bow of the ship for mines. 
Oh, I see. Uh, and, you know, it is casual mm -hmm. fight and seasickness, mm -hmm. hunger. Mm -hmm. um, so once the harbor was cleared uh, and, and the boat was able to uh, to dock, uh, were you over the over the side on the the nets or? No, uh, I I did have that experience when we made a mock landing before the Korean War broke out. While I was at Camp Pendleton, we made a mock landing. I see. And I had the experience of going over the net with the net. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, we were in uh, amphibious duck. Hmm. We had our 105 and our crew in a duck, mm -hmm. and we were in an LST, and this LST opened its gates and we paddled out on the duck. Yeah, drove up on the shore? Yeah. Okay. Uh, funny thing happened, though, while we were going ashore, is uh, LCVP, is, you know what that is? If you'll tell us, that'd be great. It, it's... Uh, the Navy's landing craft personnel. Mm -hmm. It's quite a bit bigger than a duck. Yeah. Here come one barreling down on us and hit us broadside. <laughs> it dumped, most of the crew got dumped and caved the side of the duck in. Wow. We had to get it pulled out to get our gun out after we got ashore. Wow. Wow. So did, you didn't experience any resistance or anything like that pulling up into one side? No, there was no no resistance there at, okay. at that time. Okay. So you were in, uh, how long would you say you were in once on there? Oh, we was just there a matter of a couple of days. We just started for the mountains then. Okay, okay. Um, as far as the um, heading forward, um, what, what can you tell me um, about your unit uh, or your uh, with your with your 105 team with your uh, howitzer crew uh, it was rather pleasant we we learned to work together and uh -huh. it, it was rather pleasant uh, I hadn't had any training on a 105 before I got there but I picked it up and my section leader he took me under his arm and guided me through it I ended up being a gunner on the 105. I'll be. So, uh, do you remember some of the, the men that you served with there on the on the 105? I remember a couple, yes. Who, who were those folks? Uh, Corporal Riddle. Uh -huh. He was a section leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he rotated back, there was a Corporal Hill took over. That's about all I remember. The names, I, I you know, I can visualize the others. Um, so when you headed out from from Wonsan, what was the uh, what was the game plan heading heading north? Yalu River. Yalu River. Okay. What what were what was the big push there as far as heading towards the Yalu River? That was to get the uh, North Koreans out. Yeah, it was to secure Korea, period. Okay. Uh, we had no idea the Chinese were there, and uh, we had 10th Corps and X Corps. 10th Corps was on the west, and the X Corps was on the east. I, we were in the X Corps, and we were just pushing to the northern Korea, to the Yalu River. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got as far as Choson Reservoir. Okay. That's when we got hit with the Chinese. Okay. Where did your um, uh, Where did your 105 uh, crew end up at? Where did you set up at for that for that battle? Well, the battalion I was in, we were up at Udam Ni. Okay. Okay. That was as far north as we had gotten. Okay. And then we had to start fighting our way back. Okay. 
as far as um, as far as you, Damney, where where is that? Um, that's on the western edge. West uh, west side of the reservoir. West side of the rev reservoir. So you'd set up at you, Damney, and and so. Um, when we first went up, we were on the east side, uh -huh. and uh, the army, I forget what unit, the army come up and relieved us, mm -hmm. and we went around to the west side then. Okay. So, so you were at uh, Hagaru, or? I yes. Okay. What, when, do you remember what, about what date it was that you showed up at Hagaru? I r distinctly remember the day I showed up, when we was coming back. Mm -hmm. It was the 4th of December. 4th of December. Okay. I got shot. Okay. Can you and tell I got me? evacuated there. Okay. And that was, uh, that was after, the, so you were coming back from? Uh, Udamni. Udamni, okay. And that's where, you come back from Udamni and got to Hagaru and, yeah. and got shot. Okay. Well, let's, let's go back to, to Udamni. Uh, when did you show up there? What, what date do you think it was that you showed up there? Was it right before the... Uh, I think it was the 27th or 8th of November. Okay. Somewhere's in there. Okay. So so the the battle there in and around the reservoir pretty much all, it already kicked off at that yes. point in time. Okay. Um, so you, were, you, were you fighting your way up to that point to actually set up the... No, the guns? we weren't fighting up to that point. Mm -hmm. It was when we got there that they hit us, mm -hmm. hit every unit of the 1st Marine Division. Okay. So that was on the 20, 27th? Yeah, there were November. skirmishes before that, but not with my unit. Okay. So your unit was ran into its first skirmish on the 27th? It was around the 27th, yeah. Okay. Um, how did that kick off? How did that start? Can you kind of detail that first skirmish? Uh, well, I guess the first, uh, there were rumors that the Chinese were, we were surrounded with Chinese. Mm -hmm. And this was an evening, of, of, I guess, of the 26th. And the morning of the 27th, we had squad tents, you know, we were relaxed. And we had latrines. You, uh, We'd get up in the morning and you'd have to go to the latrine. Well, you just step foot out of that tent and you got more damn rifle shots. They were it, it was just screaming with bullets. You, but in a tent they couldn't see us, but our tent was full of holes. <laughs> but we stayed down, you know. And, mm -hmm. and you look out and you could, up on the hill, you could just see them look like ants up there. Oh. And, uh, so we proceeded to uh, burn everything but what we could carry. Hmm. And uh, then we, I guess you'd kind of say we regrouped and started figuring out a way to go back. Okay. Tell me why, tell me why you burnt everything. Was there more, was there more than one reason? Uh, well, the biggest reason was to lighten our load. Okay. Okay. You think maybe some uh, concealment, a little bit of smoke concealment to, to cover, like your your. Oh uh, uh, no, no, that was no. That wasn't the reason at all. No. Okay. Just so that it was lighter load, and you weren't leaving it behind for the. Uh, yeah, we we destroyed everything that wouldn't burn, mm -hmm. and that we left behind. I see. I see. So that was the morning of the 27th? Uh, what? I, I'm, I'm guessing this is 27th, 28th, something like that. Okay. So early morning out, like, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, uh, breaking day. Break it down. Okay. Okay. Um, and so uh, so that was at Udamni. So you pull back uh, uh, from Udamni. Where do you, where's the next place that, that your crew sets up at? Well, we really didn't set up. We just followed that mountain trail back to Hagaru. To back to Hagaru. And uh, it was a long convoy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, there were skirmishes 
but it was more with the infantry than it was with the artillery. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a, I forget what hill it was, but they called it Fox Hill, mm -hmm. is where Fox Company got, almost got a lip, annihilated. But when we got there, there were breaks in the convoy where, you know, there's gaps where, uh, for some reason, I don't know what the reason, the truck, the gun I was on, got stalled and the convoy went on far enough where when we it got night, it was so snowy and frosty that the driver couldn't see the trail going down the mountain. Somebody had to walk in front of the hmm. truck and guide it. So we all voted to take two hour shifts walking. I took the first shift from 10 to 12 and I woke up a uh, section leader. He was supposed to relieve me. Hmm. I woke him up and he says, yeah, I'll get up. He says, go ahead and get in your bag. So I got in my sleeping bag and he didn't get up. Hmm. And uh, the battery gunnery sergeant was riding in the truck with the driver. And uh, Rip was the driver and he said, I can't see the road. I got to have somebody leading me. So the gunny says, get Kincaid up. I don't know if he had it in for me or if he didn't know I had just walked or what, but I walked the rest of the night down the hill till we hit a roadblock. Mm -hmm. And I was so cold, my joints were stiff. I could hardly walk. So I crawled in my sleeping bag. All I had, we had turned in our M1s Mm -hmm. to go to the infantry and they give us carbines back. Well, carbines weren't much count for distance. Mm -hmm. But before I got in my sleeping bag up on the hill, you could see them up there uh, sighting mortars in on us. Mm. But I, like I say, I was so cold, I, I didn't much care. I just wanted to get comfortable. I got in my bag and then the gunny hollered everybody off the truck. Well, then we moved in jerks going across this roadblock and uh, there was kind of an embankment there where we run alongside the truck and went down in this embankment and uh, I looked off across and I could see our battery warrant officer had turned a 105 around and he was trying to get a crew to fire into these Chinese. And uh, so I took off running. I, they have a bunch of cats and 155s sitting there that they had to destroy because they run out of fuel. I run toward them and when I, just before I got there, that's when I got shot. Mm. And uh, I hollered at the gunner and told him I, I was hit and he motioned me on and I started running up the road and I passed out. When I come to, there was a couple of guys putting me on a six by and a corpsman there giving me some morphine and putting field dressing on me. Hmm. And I rode the truck, it was about four or five miles into Hagaru. And then they put me on a plane and evacuated me. Where were you? Where were you hit at? Pardon? When, when you were shot, where were you hit at? In the shoulder, In right shoulder. shoulder. Okay. Just a. Yeah. Single uh, round, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, they. I, while I was running at one time, I looked down. You could see machine gun. They was try, trying to get a machine gun. They must have run out of ammo or a gun sandwich. <laughs> I was thankful for, but I just got a rifle shot. They're just trying. They're trying to walk it in on you. Yeah. Okay. Man. Um. So you were. Uh, from Hagaru. Uh, that was that you were sent back to a mass unit there, is that right? Or was it just yeah, a station? Yeah, I, I went to a mass unit and uh, they sent me to uh, Tokyo and then I ended up at the Yakuska Naval Hospital okay. in Japan. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, it 
as far as any any kind of uh, firing, um, you know, setting up and firing the 105. Um, did you get an opportunity? Did your crew get an opportunity to do that, uh, or were they were you, when you guys showed up at at uh, um, where was that that you damn nigh or you damn knee? Um, when you were there, uh, did you how many rounds do you think that the oh, crew man. shot? A bunch. A bunch. We well, we fired what we had, uh -huh. and of course, the Air Force was dropping supplies in, and mm -hmm. we were using them up as fast as they dropped them in on us. Wow. How many? Uh, just on your just your best guesstimate, how many rounds do you think you went through just there at UDM Knee? Oh gosh, a hundred more. A hundred more. One hundred five rounds. Do you remember just off off the top of your head what? like the blast radius is on a 105 when it impacts. Was, was it mostly, uh, well, would it have just been HE? Uh, yeah, we had HE and uh, I forget now what uh, all they call them. We had the timed uh, noses on where mm -hmm. you set so time, many Time fuse, yeah. yeah. So many seconds uh, mm -hmm. we had some of them. So you can get an air burst type yeah. of explosion yeah. instead of a ground burst. Okay. And uh, we carried shot shells. That's what the warrant officer was going to fire into that roadblock was some shot shells. Well, explain for us what a shot shell is. Well, uh, it's kind of like a shotgun shell. You uh, point blank. You don't aim. And you just bore sight mm -hmm. and fire point blank. So it's full of uh, pellets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a big old. It's a big shotgun shell. Yeah. Essentially. Okay. And he was just going to blow a hole in the uh, uh, the Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in there. That was that was at the roadblock there. Yeah. He was going to blow a big hole in the roadblock and keep on driving. Yeah. There, we had a lot of roadblocks coming down, but that one was the worst for my unit getting mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to get through that, that particular roadblock? Well, the, they hit us at dawn, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, I, I guess it's safe to say in by 10, 11, we were through it. Okay. Maybe it was longer than that. Of course, I, I was out of it by then, too. Sure, sure. So about what about what time was it in the morning, then, that you'd gotten shot, just roughly? I'm guessing it was probably 7. Okay. Somewhere around there. Okay, okay. So you're, uh, you're getting checked out uh, by the corpsman, and then you're off to the MASH unit. How long were you there? Well... It's just like MASH TV show. Mm -hmm. They come in on a helicopter and they lay you out on the ground and the doctor comes along and says, surgery or on further. And I was laying there and he come and looked at me and he said, Tokyo. Mm. Okay. So it was a matter of an hour, I guess, and I was on the plane again. I'll be. So they... Uh... I uh, can't remember the term they they had that uh, have for that um, where they're seeing if you need immediate help or, or determining, I guess if you need to go right to surgery or well or on. They they check your wound and see mm -hmm. how bad it was and mm -hmm. then make a snap decision from that. Okay, and so then you're off headed towards um, towards Tokyo. Uh, how long were you in Tokyo? Just long enough to get on a truck and go to the house, Yakuska Hospital. Okay. Okay. And so at Yakuska, um, you you get you go in. They they you're into surgery for your. No, I didn't go to surgery. They, I was my whole upper torso, front and back, was covered with caked blood, mm -hmm. and they cut my clothes off from me and put me in a bunk. Hmm. Of course, I was tired enough, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so they they put you in a bunk. You're pa you're asleep. You passed out asleep. Yeah. Um, uh, did they? Uh, so they didn't do any kind of surgery or anything like that. No. Was it, it was a clean shot through? Yes. Okay. They just changed dressings. And just changed dressings, stitch you up a little bit and just change dressings or, or let it heal out? Yeah, I was there from the 4th of December till the 20th of January. Mm. And uh, I must have hit a large artery or a large vein or something as much blood as I lost. I got down to 130 pounds. Uh, from where? What was your, what, what did you weigh before? How much did you weigh before that? Oh, about 165. Oh, so 35 pounds in about a month and a half, yeah. two months almost. Oh, my goodness. They did, of course, they were short of blood and they didn't get no transfusion or nothing. Mm -hmm. It was still mighty sore when I went back to Korea, too. Mm. So you head back to Korea uh, on the 20th of January? Yeah. Okay. Where did you go from there? Back to my old unit. Okay. Where were they at at that time? It was in the center, about the center of Korea. It was getting ready to start the spring offensive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't remember the name of the town that was near or anything. Okay. Um, I guess let's go back to, to just talk about uh, uh, you damn near maybe a little bit more uh, or just any kind of experiences there. Uh, anything, is there anything that just kind of comes to memory, just really vivid memories from that time there at Chosen? Well, like I say, we couldn't get out of our tents without getting shot at. You look up on it, the hill and you see them look like ants up there. Uh, and at night, that's when they did their attacks mostly at night. It was, you didn't get no sleep. Mm -hmm. We always had fire missions. Mm -hmm. I was gunner on the, our gun, and uh, they took a lot of the ammo bearers and took, put, sent them up to the infantry because they were uh, losing so many men. That's, that's about all I can remember other than the starting and stopping going down that mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, one time we had just rounded a bend. Of course, you know, it was all bends around the mountain. We just rounded a bend and we heard a bang on the truck behind us. Went back there and the section leader lay dead. Huh. Concussion mortar had come in, got him. At, you know, there was incidents like that that we were already scared, but it made us more scared. Like walking down that mountain in front of that truck that night, I just expected to get shot any time. Do you have any other wounds other than being shot? Any frostbite or frostbite? Anything? Whereabouts? My feet and hands. Feet and hands. Was it uh, just first degree or second degree frostbite or first degree? Just first degree. Okay. I um, I think I, I I've told the doctor this, but he he don't confirm it. I think I got my lungs frosted too hmm. from breathing that air that night. That cold air. Yeah. Could you see, well, I mean, I, from what I, I've read and, and what I've heard, um, 
as far as breathing out, your your breath would just kind of hang there in the air. Is that right? Well, we had scarves mm -hmm. over, and our breath would freeze, mm -hmm. and uh, our scarves would be solid ice. Would you take turns like going into the tents or anything like that to kind of warm up? Uh, the infantry more or less had the warm up tents. Mm -hmm. I never seen any artificial heat from a time we burnt our equipment until I got to Japan. Mm -hmm. Do um, uh, you have any other, like, just particularly memorable experiences while you were there? Uh, in Korea or? It, around Chosun, around the Chosun Reservoir. Oh. War. No, not no. really. Uh, I mean, like I say, we th we thought we were doomed. We didn't think it was going to get out of there, and things was kind of a blur, you might say. I didn't know where we were or how long we were there or anything. I have read a few books and did some studying, and I finally figured out where where we were and where I got wounded. And for a long time, I didn't know. And I was kind of bitter when I got out and I tried to block it, but uh, you can't block something like that. Um, so when you're, um, let's talk about that, I guess, for a little bit. Um, as far as coming out, uh, being bitter where you're just Bitter at the military or the, the situation or just being shot or, or what exactly? Uh, well, we more or less blame MacArthur for not using information he was fed about Chinese being there. Mm -hmm. he, he just says it's just a bunch of laundrymen. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But they weren't? No, they were very well trained. In fact, a lot of them were part of uh, Chiang Kai-shek's troops when he was fighting communism. A lot of them were from that skirmish. Hmm. Hmm. And they, when Chiang Kai-shek was fighting communism, we were over there helping them, and we were supplying them with arms, and them arms is what they were using on us up there at the reservoir. Hmm. That would have been only been a few years before. Yeah. With Chiang Kai-shek. Well, it was in uh, 48, they yeah. pulled out of China. Yeah. And then in 49, he finally gave it up to the communists. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Did you, uh, were you awarded any medals or citations or anything like that? I got Good Conduct Medal and Purple Heart, Presidential Unit Citation, Korean Presidential Unit Citation, and uh, National Defense Ribbon. How did you stay in touch with your family during that time, or did you? Did you get mail or anything like that? We, we would write letters whenever we had the opportunity, and okay. few and far between. <laughs> sure. Uh, so did the military uh, notify your family that you'd been injured, or, or did you have to do that yourself? Well, see, I didn't have a mother. It was just my dad, mm -hmm. and he, oh, he was bad at communications other than talking but uh, the best I could get out of him I was wounded on the 4th of December and he didn't get notified till the middle of January hmm. but I 
the 5th or 6th of December, I got a hold of the Red Cross and sent him a telegram that I'd got wounded. Mm. Hmm. Um. Do you, um, do you have any idea how many casualties there were in your unit? In my particular unit, no, I don't know. Okay. Like I say, it was artillery, and it was fewer than the infantry. Yeah. Did you? Um, uh, well, it seems kind of redundant, but uh, as far as did you experience any pressure or stress uh, while you were there? Yeah, you know, I know you had said that that you, you guys kind of felt doomed. Yeah. Uh, as far as pressure, no. Uh, stress, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was strenuous fighting the cold and the war. Uh, but the only instant of any pressure was the night Gunny, Gunny got me up after I just stood a watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I never questioned him or anything. I just did what he asked me to do. Did you uh, carry anything that was like a good luck charm or anything that you carried with you that was special? No, no, no I didn't have anything. Nothing like that? Okay. Um, a diary or any kind of journal? Did you keep anything like that? No. No. Okay. I talked about my dad being... <laughs> bad on uh, communications, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> well, an apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, I guess. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, where were you when uh, the Korean War ended? When the Korean War ended? Yeah, yeah. I was working on a farm. Where, whereabouts? Iowa. Iowa, back in Iowa, okay. <laughs> um, Was that what you did? Did you do that for quite a while, or what, what kind of a what, what were your plans coming back? I should I should ask you that first. But what were your plans getting ready to head back to the states? What were you looking to do? Farming my dad's farm. Just go back and, and farm your dad's farm. Yeah. You said he was going to uh, do that fifty fifty with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. How long did you do that? Just two years. It, it didn't last. <laughs> I worked, I hired out to other farmers after that. Uh -huh. And then, um, uh, did you go back to school or use your GI Bill or anything no. like that? No, I lost that. Lost it. Just didn't go back and, and it, it lapsed. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Um, how about your close friendships uh, from the Marines? Did uh, Do you maintain those today? No. Any of those? Uh, no, uh, I I didn't. Like say, I was kind of bitter when I got out. And uh -huh. I did. The only one I remember is uh, Corporal Riddle, our section leader, was from Salt Lake City, and I have tried ever since in any book or anything to find him, and I can't find him anywhere. Mm -hmm. I had no address or anything. Just yeah. I used to know his first name, but I forgot that now. But uh, no, I had no no other contacts. Mm -hmm. Did you join any uh, uh, American Legion or VFW or anything I, like that when uh, you came back? I joined the Legion right away when I got out, and I've been a Legion member pretty much ever since. Mm -hmm. But I joined the VFW and the DAV and Marine Corps League, and Purple Heart Association. I've joined all of them in the last few years. Mm -hmm. But no desire to back then, back in uh, the 50s? To no. Join, to join up with them? No. Okay. Well, in fact, I didn't know there was a Marine Corps League. And there was no DAV or VFW close to me. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, a Purple Heart, I didn't know there was association with them either. Mm 
Um, how do you think your experiences at Chosen affected your civilian life? Well, I think a lot of my marriages was affected by that. Okay. How many, how many times were you married? Three. Three times. Okay. Uh, there's other instances in my life that I think that had an effect on. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, I was bitter because of what I had been in, and uh, I don't know, I just kind of turned my back on the world. Uh, I uh, get a job, I would, I would work and try and forget things, and busy making a living. Mm -hmm. So it, was it anger issues or, or um... uh, no? It was. Uh, I don't think I could say as it anger. It's just what I had been through. Just it just worked on me. I, I had to keep working to get it off my mind. Mm. There were times I couldn't sleep at night when it would start in on me. Do so you think your wives had any idea that that might be part of it, or, or no? I don't know if they did or not. They never, uh, never uh, talked to me much about it, and I never talked to them much about it. Is that a regret, maybe? not talking to them about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I find out now that I have joined the Chosen Few in Marine Corps League that you talk to these guys and they have, they're the same as you and it helps to get it off your chest. Mm -hmm. Where the wife didn't know what I was talking about or didn't have an interest in what, you know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, I do. Did your, um, do you think your, your uh, experience in the Marines influenced your thinking about war or, or just the military in general? Oh, both. both. How so? Well, when uh, Desert Storm, I wanted in the worst way to go back in and go help, but I was too old. <laughs> How old were you then at that time? That would have been 91, right? 90, 91? Yeah. Well, I was 60. You were 60 at that time. Okay. But they, you're a little too old. They wouldn't take you. No. <laughs> Tell me why you wanted to go back at that time for Desert Storm. Can you explain that? Yeah, I wanted to help fight for the country. Okay. Uh, I, I, I guess I felt I had something to contribute because I'd been through it. If they let you back in at that time, what would you have done? What do you what would you think you what would you have volunteered to do? Teach classes or or teach training? Uh, uh, yeah, I I was probably too old to go in combat, but sure. I could be an instructor. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought of. See, when I got back from Korea, I went to Paris Island, South Carolina, as a drill instructor. Mm. And uh, like I say, my senior drill instructor was a combat veteran, and they were taking combat veterans from Korea and making them drill instructors. And I think that helped train recruits as someone that had the experience. Did you endure your days as a drill instructor? Yes and no. 
I got married, and that ruined it. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the hours? Drill instructor's life is not for a married man. <laughs> Don't you live in the uh, barracks for pretty much the cycle? Pretty much, yeah. So it would have been, what, 16 weeks you'd have been in the barracks? Yeah. With your uh, recruits? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that would be tough on a, on a relationship. you this, and, I, and I've asked this to several other gentlemen I've talked with, was there any, any kind of um, examples of humanity, either good humanity or, or poor humanity that you saw there in Chosin or, or during the Korean War? Well, before Chosin, when I made the Incheon Landing in, in Seoul, I seen uh, one of our interpreters worked in the North Korean over with a rifle butt. Mm. Uh, I guess they say that was, well, and as we were advancing north of Seoul, we would come along dead civilians that would uh, have their fingers chopped off where they'd taken a ring off from them or something. Mm. Uh, and North Koreans, well, the. The Chinese, I don't think, were as bad as the North Koreans. But they they were rotten. Hmm. 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 Any good human? Anything good? As far yeah. As humanity. Uh, any good examples? Oh. Uh, I didn't personally experience it, but I've heard of the Chinese letting the POW go back to their unit because of the way the weather, they didn't want to bother with them. They couldn't feed them or nothing. Hmm. And we, in turn, did the same sometimes, hmm. just so, on now and then. Set them on their way and yeah. let them make their way back. Oh, hmm. Was well, there anything that you'd like to add that, that we haven't covered in this interview? No, I pretty well covered it, Joe. Okay, okay. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to sit down with me and uh, discuss the okay the Battle of Chosen and 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 your time in the service and and thereafter. I certainly yeah. appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much.